my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. It is Wiener Dog Day and I'm going to fit in some other things today because today's video won't take as long with the dog, the, the section we're gonna sew. But first, before we do any of that, it is chocolate and peanut day. So of course, you know, you know, chocolate peanut M&Ms are the call of the day. You wrap that all up into one. <laughs> Of course, there's a lot of other candies with chocolate and peanuts, but this has just chocolates and peanuts. Yum, yum, yum. Plus, I had to get this. Absolutely had to get the candy corn version, the aut autumn, the autumn mix, because it has the pumpkins and it has the chocolate candy corns, my absolute favorite of the candy corns. Okay, so I'm ready. I'm ready for fall. And our temps have gone down just a little bit here in Northern Virginia. Uh, so, <laughs> so what do we talk about? A few weeks we'll be like, oh, it's crisp. It's crisp out. Yep, that'll be us. That'll be me. <laughs> so I've got all of the strips for the dog. So I've got three sets. One, two, three. Three sets of them cut. And I have... There's, there's a lot left, so I want to show you that because I want if you haven't started cutting yet, I recommended that you do not just cut everything up because there are tons of strips left that you can do. You could do a second dog. Uh, you could do just you could keep these for another project, and there's they're so they're so cool. You can do a rail fence, do something easy like that uh, to go along with it. But don't don't cut every all those strips up because then you've got these little chunks of this that you're not even going to use. Leave them long so you have all your options available. I only cut what I need. I so so rarely will cut a whole bunch of stuff. It's just not how my brain works. My brain's always like, oh wait wait that might not be a good idea. So I do just what I need and then uh, leave the rest of the fabric. Okay, from yesterday, we've got the dog. So I need to straighten him up. Yeah, so we'll put him straight so that we can lay out the strips for the first body row. There's three rows in this one, and we have to lay out the colors. So I can do it two ways. So I could just lay one of them out, two of the sets, are have fairly similar pieces of fabric so i was cutting two at a time um but i think a few of them i didn't like an image and cut around it or something like that and then the third set was kind of a mishmash now i do not want them to be lined up exactly the same so that's why i will put them up on the wall and try try out the layout to see how it looks the best thing would be to put all three sets up there and then maneuver them around and so that's what we're going to do. I need to, I think I need to get the ladder though to go and move the top row there up just a little bit so I have some space. Here is the first one and I like it. I like the balance. I balanced them as I was cutting them. So I put them in order before I cut. That's what I just showed you, you know, it's laid out on the table. And so the color is pretty good. Uh, and I'm having to look, just look sort of at some balance. First of all, the one thing I did notice is that this larger scale print, there's the turtle, but they have, I have the turtle up there. So I'm gonna move this to one of the others, like, you know, like down here. So, whoops, so down there. So I'll just put that there. And I already pulled so I pulled this one. Okay, so what else do I see? Uh, I've got these whites there, sort of close together. So what I wanna do is just either switch or move, like I could just move that one. See how that goes. And I'm not trying to balance each row. I actually do, do not want each row to have like black, white, caramel, aqua, you know, yellow, green, you know, I don't want it to repeat like that. I want them scattered and more random. Uh, so I will do the next two rows and we'll see how they look. This is the one that was pretty much like the first row. And so I don't want to start out. So they were stacked the same. So basically it's an easy way to do that to not have them stacked the same is just to move part of the stack to the bottom and then place this on top. Now the thing is I just use this print for the middle one in yellow. So I do not want the blue, you know, gets fussy, doesn't it? Gets fussy. 
So I'll use the letters and I'll move this guy here and that guy here and then now I will start and see how this third one looks. Here it is from a distance. It's so darling, looking so darling. Now I do uh, want to change a few things on the bottom because I've got text, text, text and so I don't want that much text together so I just gotta switch some out. First of all I will switch that one to the to the puzzle and then what I can do is I can just take a teal, a, you know, aqua and switch get like the feet there, we get the ones with the feet and put him there. So, you know, then I could say, yo, are these two close? You know, there's a green and a green. I'll think about that. Might not worry about those two puzzle pieces being that close, but oh, I might because I've got a close one up here. Uh, close one, close one. I've got one down there. So let me let me see what I have. Puzzle piece out. And I, sw I put the letters back in over here, though, and move the beads over here, the counting beads. Okay, one last look. And, yeah, it's looking cute. Super cute. So I'm loving this. I did switch a few things around. I kind of looked this way and found, like, some that were the same blue fabric or whatever it was right above each other so I sort of rotated those a little bit and so now I'm, I'm pretty good with that I will would go into could do some other things <laughs> got, got, got talking too fast do a few other things here and then I will sew a row because yes I gotta sew a row close out this video First, 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 one of our wonderful friends, Elaine in Pennsylvania, sent this extra book that she got for a giveaway. <gasps> How exciting! How exciting! Thank you, Elaine. It is a brand new book from the Fat Quarter Shop on jelly rolls. We're using jelly rolls. I've got extra strips. I could do like a probably a small version of one of these. They do have. Are they all done with, with multiple sizes? Often there's a bunch of different sizes or you could just, you know, trade out the size. Like you could do like a four by four or something like that if you had extra strips um, for like a baby quilt. Uh, that would be super cute, wouldn't it? So there's all kinds of neat stuff in this book. And this, and, and, I should have done this on Monday, Monday with the pumpkins, but the Monday got, video got too full. So we're doing it today. I have an extra pumpkin jolly bar whoops and I will send you the the pattern along with it so these two things will go together to one of you or you or you so uh, you're going to go to my website not not here at YouTube don't say anything about giveaway in the comments or the bots and the spammers will come in so go to my website it is linked in the description box below if you get my emails it is emailed to you it is the same website I love to make quilts where all of the projects are is if you go up past the table with all the different projects that starts the first article so uh, it's all it's all there so you can go and enter somebody somebody will get one of those get both of them rather somebody will get both of them it's gonna to go to one person because you know gotta gotta have a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> a few other things we did a huge um, fundraiser to help the children of Ukraine do you remember that and we also then made the quilt blocks uh, and gave the quilts away and people made your, your major blocks and you displayed them and I took one of my quilts up to the Lutheran, Lutheran World Relief Center which is just in Maryland above uh, where I am and our wonderful friend Carla has worked with the organization and she you know organized a tour for me and she had some of her friends and our ambassador Kathy came and and met and we did the tour so I donated that quilt so here's my quilt so the the quilt that I donated they were holding to take with them uh, when they went to do some uh, video work to show everybody kind of how the Lutheran World Relief was helping uh, the children and the families of Ukraine because uh, they do not just quilts they have other relief packages supplies things like that that they do uh, and of course you can donate money so the video came out and Carla emailed it to me so the link is below and this 
that's been sitting here is a picture of the front and there is the quilt. So it was gifted to a young mom and her child. And so it is just uh, so heartwarming to see the work that the Lutheran World Relief does and the work that all of you donated to. Now, UNICEF that we did the main fundraiser for, we have collected as a group $235,000 you have donated to help the children. It's just been an incredible outpouring of love for people going through such, such hardship. Uh, so there you go. And you can go out and see that. So I want you to know that, you know, that um, is still available. If you never did donate and you still wanted to, you can still add to our um, tally. And that's all earmarked. Uh, from UNICEF to Ukraine. So that is a budget that just gets used for the work they're doing in Ukraine. So I picked up a few things recently from the Fat Quarter Shop that I want to show you because there's some really interesting bundles and I'm going to be using one of these. They look real similar, but they are different. Uh, one's called the Berry Basket and the other is the Isabel line. So they have a, a very different vibe and feel to the fabrics, but these are called but, like small fat quarter bundles. And so if you are looking for something to do maybe for our, and it's not really autumn, but if you didn't want to do an autumn quilt, uh, you could use these, like get two of these for our block Wednesday, but I wanted to show you the fabrics because they are just so awesome. This one is the uh, berry basket. So, and they're curated bundles. Um, I think this one is a curated bundle, meaning the Fat Quarter Shop assembled it. You know, it didn't like, you know, come from the you know manufacturer this way. I love that gray in there. And there's the pink, two pinks. Oh, and I love this little hexies. They're tiny little hexies. They're just so cute. They kind of read like a dot, like a really tight dot. There, get in close, see that? I love that. Then there's a red version of this white that's out here. And then you go into the blues. Oh, so pretty. Summer blues, summer blue, yeah, and then navy. And then once again, this navy has, this may actually be a fabric line. I don't know, I'd have to look. Now I'm I confused myself, but it's called Berry Basket. Uh, that's Hexies again, and then the berries. And they're blueberries and strawberries. Isn't that cute? That is so cute. Uh, and I got two of these and two of the other because I couldn't decide which one I wanted to use for the pr upcoming project. Something, um, something we'll be sewing in the future. So let me put this one over here. And then the Isabel. I also have a Jolly Bar of this, which has a really cool pattern, and I really want to do that someday. I haven't done it yet, but I want to. And this one has the Americana feel because it has the American flag in it. So I want you to see that. Look at this. Look how beautiful this is. This is my Minnick Simpson, and they always do really, really fantastic things. Cherries and apples and the blossoms. This, oh, this is so pretty. Now this line has been out a little while, so I'm not sure what you can get in yardage. Uh, there are the cherries and blue flowers. I think it might be upside down here. It looks like all the cherries are facing me. And the stars, they do a lot with stars. And this has got, I love this, love, Pink with polka dots. So love this. Stripe. There's a red, 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 everything red with that little, little um, images done with kind of dots. They're really cool. A paisley. That's a very cool paisley. Love that paisley. And then the blue with the cherries and the blue with the dots. So awesome. You can go check out everything that's there and the flags on blue. They are, that is just so, so fantastic. Paisley, another, the navy paisley, that's really packed. I really like it how it's packed like that. And then another companion print in navy, which has got like a medium you know, scale, a little bit smaller scale than, than the rest of them. And so these are like, they're not a full fat quarter bundle, but when you buy two of them, then you get you get more, you know, obviously. You get twice as many. Um, and there'll be a lot of the repeat, but that works really well with the samplers. So, and then you could always supplement with something from your stash that works with the fabrics. Okay, one of those. 
what we'll be using. Then I had to get a few other things because they're just so stinking cute. Look at this. Look at this ornament. Ruby Star Society has some ornaments. I don't know what all will be left by the time you see this video, so you're going to pop over there and check it out. And I got some more zipper pulls because you know I love that octopus by Ruby, um, Ruby Star Society. I love that octopus so much. Then I had to get I had to get some washi tape. These are you know the pretty tapes, and they don't you know you can put them on your well you can put them on your calendars. You can put them. I I close envelopes with them. I use them on my rulers. But these were kind of fall colors, and I thought they were just so nice looking. Gives me a little bit of variety because I haven't gotten any lately. So whoops. Okay. Well, it comes in. They all come in once uh, unit like this. I also have been using these, these Bob, I think they're called Bobbin Boats. Yeah, it says right on there. It says right on there, Bobbin Boats. So here's the one I've been using. I got one of these in the Fat Quarter Shops um, uh, sew sampler box. And I thought, you know what? That is so useful. And then I thought, I need to get a couple more so that I can, they're a little hard to get. Like if I've got all of them filled, it's hard to, whoops, it's hard to, to get like one in the middle out. So I was thinking I just needed to loosen them up so there's a little space. I don't need to be that frugal. I can just put them in another boat and have, um, you know, have, have a little bit more space in between them. And then I can put them by color. So that is why I got more. Because they, I just, I'm finding them super, super useful. Really, really nice. And if you are an applicator or doing something where you're winding, you know, taking the thread from here to use, these would be really nice for travel because they're not very bulky and they stay in there really well. You have to, you have to, you know, sort of manipulate this to pull them out because it's just, you know, a rubber stuff. And um, so they stay in there well. It'd be great in your project bag that you're, you're doing. Okay, one thing before I sew. So I want to tell you about the Tidy Up Challenge for today. It's something I read about. Uh, it's called 121212 by Joshua Becker, who is a minimalist. He writes about minimalization, and minimalists and how they you know, live and how if you want to be one. But you don't have to be a minimalist to do a 121212 challenge. And what you're going to do is you're going to find 12 things to throw away, 12 things to donate, um, you know, recycle, well, I guess you could call recycle either the donate or the throw away, whichever you like. And then you have 12 things to return to their proper place because you know that happens. You haul stuff out, it's in the wrong spot, and then you leave it there in the wrong spot for many, many months at times, sometimes years. And you know, that batting that's stuck at the end of your table, the thing stacked on the end of your ironing board. Uh, let's talk about some of the stuff I got over here. Uh, <laughs> and they need to go away. Now, if you can't find in your own space, your sewing space, 12 to throw away, 12 to um, donate, or 12 to re you know move to the proper place, expand out to your home because I think you can get the 12 probably somewhere else in your house <laughs> and you'll be you'll be so happy you did it. Okay, I'm going to go sew that first strip and be right back. Okay, I have one one done, one done. So you can see them there. I'll take a picture and have that on my website today too. Here we go. Look. Oh, I did as I was sewing. I switched a couple of them. I think I may have switched one not on purpose, but they're there. There they are, all sewn, ready for getting the body together. And tomorrow we'll talk about. I just have a tip or two tomorrow, and then we'll get the other parts sun, sewn so fun so fun i did get a piece of mail and so i thought i'd show you this this is from jessica in ohio she sent the card and she sent a critter block a very special one this is a very small great pyrenees dog because she thought with all of the chickens and different animals that we had we needed a guard dog there in the critter family isn't this absolutely stunning oh my gosh you did the best job on this there are a lot of little tiny foundation paper pieces in here the link to the to the great Pyrenees block to the pattern is in the description box below and at the critter page at I love to make quilts okay so you will go over to my website to enter why does I keep doing that <laughs> to enter to win these uh, over there it's going to be fun these will go to somebody so fun so I love you Mwah. 
Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone, making a wiener dog with me this week. I'll see you online.